yeah, the next one here is, of course, my uh, signature shovel guitar. And this one is, uh, it's funny because I've, I've sold so many of these, built so many of them. And um, uh, after, you know, I did a kind of performance in my backyard with one. Right, um, right. And that's, I, that, I think everybody, everybody's seen that. <laughs> it got like, crazy is. like uh, you know it's funny because it was just like off the cuff that that video and, and yeah. just making it up on my back porch and yeah. uh, it got like you know 40 million views on Facebook alone right. after like a month or so and but we got so many requests for people wanting shovel guitars that I, I started building them and uh, never knew I was going to be like a, a shovel guitar builder or anything <laughs> like that but you know, I, I love it, and it's, it's stuff like this, too. I'll get into some of the uh, homemade instruments that I, I play a lot of and, and build. But it's just the art of it and learning, like, the essence of what a guitar is, you know, right. what, it, what it has to have to be good and what it doesn't have to have to be good, you know, and, yeah. and also how to play just, just strings and how to kind of make up your own rules. And I think that's what's beautiful about something like this. But um, oh, get into the story, you know, I've actually never... Uh, owned my own like I would end up like you know making a living on the road I'd sell the ones I had on the road at my last gig or something and go back home and and build more and so I never actually had one that was like mine that I played all the time and so uh, this one I decided I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep one finally and uh, I, I was uh, contacted on I think Instagram or something by this artist in Greece who's a tattoo artist uh, named Achilles and he wanted to paint a shovel for me and oh, so great. I, I sent this to him it was a nightmare getting it there with customs because oh, they're yeah. like what is this thing you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean like uh, yeah. is it and so um but yeah he did an amazing job and then there was another company funny like contacted me on Instagram who wanted to build me a custom strap and uh we were like well can you match this guitar and uh so that's a Le rock skin straps in uh France oh. built this like all leather Strap. They even got the pickup on it. Look at that. Oh, that's so, so cool. So that it was. Just, it's like an optical illusion now. But um. Okay. Yeah. So, let's hear this. Yeah. Let's hear this thing. So it's got a uh, three strings. It's got a, a volume pedal. It's got a, a custom pickup that um, I helped uh, design. Um, and a volume knob. And so basically, it's a. It's like a power chord. A root fifth root. Generally, yeah. like an open G tuning. <laughs> And like tempered steel sustains forever, which is nice too. It does. It's great. You so can, how, how did it happen? How did, how did you decide to do this the first time? Well, you know, um, at the time, uh, it was when my wife, uh, Nikki, and I were living on the road full time. And um, a lot of what I played w were homemade instruments. And uh, I started playing a few. And eventually, people started coming out to shows and just bringing me stuff they built in their garage. And, <laughs> and I'd play it on stage, you know, like pretty much no matter what it was. I would, I would, if someone brought something they built, I would play it on stage. Fearless. And um, I bet there was some bad experience, some bad. <laughs> well, you know, it's like you got to learn how to like one string instruments with like really hot piezo pickups. Yeah. It's like, you know, you got to kind of come up with something right. and, and make it entertaining. But, you know, that's what a lot of those like my, my early blues like heroes did, you know, sure. with like homemade, you know, like Bo did with these crazy instruments he built totally. and and just the tradition of it and I think that's kind of like what slide guitar is about too is right you don't need frets you need like ideally if you, you don't even have fret markers and you, you don't need them if you can listen to it you know yeah. and, and learning to play like that I think trial by fire with all of these people coming out and bringing these instruments uh, had to learn how to come up with tunings on the fly for different instruments right. um, run things through an amp and amplify it without crazy feedback and different things like that and um, um, no one ever grounded their instruments, and so luckily, right. like with wire, like wireless systems, I realized you never have to ground an instrument if you're going wireless. 
and so that that wasn't an issue but uh, a guy named Roger Berry brought out a shovel guitar that he built and um, that was the one I played in that original video and yeah. so um, he gave that guitar to me after that that show I was playing I think at the Juke Joint Festival in uh, Clarksdale Mississippi uh, when he brought that one out to me and um, you know like uh, and it's happened with a few different instruments and a few different people who've done that uh, where um, you know, I'll play something, put out a video, and then they'll they'll thank me later. You know, and it's like uh, like with the the ammo can uh, right. guitar. You know, um, just getting a lot of people turned on to a cool new idea and a cool new design and a new way to look at guitars. And you know, again, it's like it's like minimalist art too. You know, and yeah, it's, it's I love just it. beautiful. It's like um, you've seen the the movie This Might Get Loud with oh yeah Jack, yeah definitely that first scene where Jack White just you know he he. He nails a couple uh, strings to a board, and it sounds like Jack White. That's it, all you. That's all you need, you know. Yeah. And if you can, and if you can make music with that, when you pick up a guitar, it's a lot easier. When you break a string, you just play on one. <laughs> you right. play on the one that's in tune, you right, know. And right. Then, or or uh, you learn how to think on the fly like that, and you also learn how to play up and down the fretboard instead of in patterns, you know. And you start start stop thinking about patterns as much, you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's an interesting thought on on. Particularly on slide guitar, like that really singing voice, I think that's kind of where that came out of. Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Absolutely. And all those patterns on the scales, they start making more sense. It's kind of like, I think with piano, you think linear, linearly. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why a lot of, uh, you know, when you learn music theory, you have to learn piano because you can see it in a straight line. And on guitar, I think what's easy about it is you can be visual about it and have these patterns and you know you change from A to B all you have to do is move the pattern up a whole step um, but you might not be thinking about intervals as much or you know about mm -hmm. the the scales and, and the way they repeat because you're thinking about them as, as six six string patterns you know right right it, it, I, it, it tends to be it's almost like a cut and paste thing yeah you know? yeah exactly uh -huh. whereas just like paint by numbers or something right, you know? right. <laughs> Whereas with that, you're just like whatever the melody it goes with the melody goes where it goes. Yeah, yeah, in a, in a different way, totally. And then when you go back to six string, it's like I'm gonna, I'm tuning this string down. And like I want this string here and this string here, and you start just thinking about it like six strings or like six instruments, you know, and they each sound different. Yeah. And and you just make them all do what you want for whatever song. And I, that's how I approach like solo guitar arrangements a lot. Is I think like. Um, I think of the bass strings as like a male singer, uh, and the unwound strings as sort of like a female singer. And yeah. so when you're you're playing and arranging, you can have like a duets. You can have different call and response parts, and you start to learn the sound of each string in a different way. It's that's a really cool way to look at it. That's great, man. Okay, we got to see. That's gonna be a tough one to break. <laughs> well, we, had, we were working on pa uh, puns before this. I was thinking, really dig that tone. And Justin said. <laughs> Groundbreaking. That was my favorite <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Can't beat it. <laughs>